Hello and uh, welcome to our, our webinar, short webinar on specification of concrete to the BS8500. Um, this one is, uh, is just introduces it um, and talks about exposure classes. Um, concrete is the second most used material in the world after water, so it is very heavily used around the world. In the UK, we have our British standard BS8500 um, that provides guidance on how to specify this really useful material so that it achieves what you want it to achieve. And this presentation should go through just, the, just introducing what you need to think about when you're starting to use 8500 and looking at some of the, um, the things you need to, to, to worry about in terms of what your concrete has to do. Um, concrete um, is, is not cement. Um, it is a, a mixture of uh, cement, water, fine aggregate or sand, and coarse aggregate. Um, it sometimes has, and um, quite often has, admixtures put in it, but admixtures are a small adi a chemical addition to the, um, to the concrete to give a specific property, either during the fresh stage or the hardened, uh, the hardened stage of the concrete. Um, it's, it's a small proportion and therefore it doesn't really come into these. These proportions can be modified um, that you see here. Um, we can have more spent or, or more coarse aggregate, um, less water or more water, and more air, it can be air entrained. Um, and, and what you're trying to do is to specify concrete that does what you need it to do. Um, and then, um, uh, and, and then, so that's that's what that's what you want. You want a concrete that does what it, what you wanted to do, um, and the mixture, uh, the mix design is tends to be done by a concrete producer who has more experience of mix design. So in this talk, I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be uh, going through um, how we specify concrete um, in terms of um, uh, the, the, what we need to look at um, to. Uh, do our specification to 8500. Um, so what we need to be thinking of is what we need to specify. And the first one up, um, as, a, as a structural engineer, I always think of this as the first thing I think of, um, is the strength of the concrete. So um, it needs to be, the way that you specify the strength is uh, in this sort of way. As you can see here, C4050 concrete, it's an example. Um, uh, the C stands for the fact that it's a normal weight concrete. So a lightweight concrete is LC. Uh, 40 is the cylinder strength in megapascals and 50 is the cube strength in megapascals. Uh, to uh, to um, uh, Euro code 2, we uh, use the, the cylinder strength, the, um, the characteristic cylinder strength, uh, 40 in this case, um, in our design. Uh, but we tend to measure um, and crush cubes. So the cube test that you'll get back uh, about your um, about your concrete will will have on this in this um, example would be 50 rather than 40. So we we use both in order to make it clear that we mean 40 cylinder 50 uh, cube. The next one we need to think about is consistency or workability, as it used to be called. Um, this is one for the contractor who's actually going to be placing the concrete um, and uh, should be filled out by the, the contractor who knows how he's going to place it. And it will either be as a slump class, which gives it S, or a flow class, which is given as F. So S1, S2, S3, or F1, F2, F3. Um, uh, slump and flow um, depends on how much of how flowable the concrete is. If it's if it's fairly um, well packed, um, then you would use a slump. Um, if it's if it's a looser mix, um, and it has to be designed to be a loose mix, it isn't it isn't a mix that's just got too much water in it. But if it's been designed to be a flowing mix, then you would use the flow uh, class. Um, the next one up that you might need to use as a specification. Um, it, within the specification is the water cement ratio and the minimum cement content. Both of these affect both the durability and the strength of the concrete. Um, uh, and there are tables 
to tell you what sort of um, water spent ratio and minimum spent contents you need for your particular exposure class. And we'll talk about exposure classes in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, when we talk about cement, and in the previous um, uh, slide I was talking about the fact that it's about 10% of concrete is cement. I don't just mean Portland cement, I mean all sorts of the, the, the binder that binds the the, uh, the concrete together. Um, so it's, there's various different types of cement and you can specify one type of cement or several types of cement within your specification. And you might like to do that because you've, you're, you've got your, the, the concrete in the ground um, and it's needing to be sulfate resisting and therefore you would specify a concrete, a cement type to um, cope with the sulfate in the ground. Uh, and then the uh, the next one I'm just going to look at, there are other, there are other, other sorts that we'll talk about later, but um, uh, the other one that you have to specify is the aggregate size. It's the maximum aggregate size, um, and the normal one is 20 millimetres. Um, you can go for larger aggregate size, normally 40 maximum aggregate size, if you're going for something like a, a large um, uh, section of concrete, or you might be going for something that's smaller, either 10 or 14 millimeter maximum aggregate size. If you have a, a narrow section, um, or you've got um, a, your reinforcement is going to be congested, so you can go for a different aggregate size than 20 millimeters. But 20 millimeters is the recommended. Um, and if you if you actually do just want to have a maximum, maximum aggregate size of 20, then you don't actually need to say anything. Um, it's only if you need to, to, to modify it from that. Um, I've just spoken about the exposure classification that you need to be looking at. So this this sort, this, this exposure classification um, is to do with making sure that you have got um, the right concrete for where you're going to put it. Um, and um, concrete is affected by different um, elements. Uh, and uh, the concrete or the reinforcement within the concrete is affected by different exposures. Um, the first three that are down there, uh, XC, XD and XS, they are all um, to do with the reinforcement. If you don't have reinforced concrete, if your concrete is a mass concrete, then you don't need to worry about XC, XD or XS uh, because it's only affecting the, um, the, the, the the reinforcement. So XC is corrosion of the reinforcement induced by carbonation. XD is corrosion of the reinforcement induced by chlorides. And XS is um, corrosion induced by chlorides from the sea. Um, so chlorides and chlorides from the sea are slightly different because seawater has other elements that might make a difference to the um, corrosion of the reinforcement. Um, there are different levels of these exposure classifications. So XC1 is an internal um, concrete inside a building. Um, it's only being affected, it might be affected by carbonation, but it's a, it's a mild expo exposure uh, to carbonation. It tends to be uh, when you have uh, alternate wet-dry uh, that the exposure class needs to be uh, increased. Um, but there are, within 8500, there is uh, the information uh, that helps you um, uh, work out what sort of exposure class you've got. Um, the next two are freeze thaw attack XF and chemical attack, which is ACEC um, from uh, a special digest number one from BRE, BRE. Those are both to do with um, the concrete itself. So it can affect mass concrete and reinforced concrete, those two. Um, and chemical attack is is basically about sulfates in the ground, um, which affect the uh, the concrete itself rather than the um, uh, rather than the reinforcement. So um, the, again, there are um, there are levels. You can have something that's that's that's, that's a very high exposure level or a fairly mild exposure level, um, and it's worth looking through 8500 to check what you what you've got with those. Um, 
the other thing that's that's within um, uh, 8500 is your intended working life. Um, uh, you can have th there are two um, uh, standards in intended working life. First one is 50 years, and that's really for buildings. Um, and 100 years is the second one, and that's for civil engineering structures and monumental structures. So something that you want to last for for, for longer, for a long time. Um, uh, quite often, our clients would like um, the uh, uh, a building to be 60 years. Um, internally, the, the internal concrete that's an XC1 uh, exposure classification. That's actually the same whether it's 50 years or 100 years, so that's no worries. But externally, you could possibly, you can either say that 60 years is close to 50 years and use the table A4 in BS 8500 Part 1, um, or you can do an interpolation between the 50 years and the 100 years tables. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, uh, show you uh, just table A4. Table A5 look, looks the same, and you can see that these tables give you. Um, so that's the, this A4 is for the 100 years, um, uh, for the 50 years, sorry, uh, A5 is for the 100 years. And you can see that as you go up in exposure class, uh, so XC1 to XC34, you need more cover. So that's the distance between the reinforcement and the face of the concrete. Um, and you also need um, a stronger concrete. Um, and XD and XS tend to be um, needing stronger um, and um, stronger concretes for more durability and uh, and um, more cover. So that's the that's the um, that's the end of this short uh, uh, webinar. Just to give you a, a, some information about um, 8500 um, and when you're starting off with the exposure classes. Um, we'll we'll then go on um, in the next webinar is to, to give you some information about how how you actually specify the specification methods. Thank you very much. Bye.